just tell us what we do Light them up, drink them down Whiskey and cigars all around Cheers, y'all Well, well better every single time welcome ladies and gentlemen to this fine radio program podcast and video extravaganza he says wielding a large knife uh known internationally as the world famous <laughs> smoke it and toast and welcome to the show it is number 251 we are all about craft beer fine spirits and hand rolled cigars Those are all good things and they are wonderful things we're we brought just to say you, we're all about good things we should say yeah we should just call <laughs> stuff good uh, we should call uh today's show um how to make the perfect whiskey smash? Because ah. that's what we are going to attempt to do on the program today. So more on that in just a minute. We were we are brought to you by mycigarshirts.com. Great shirts on the web for cigar lovers and those who love them, uh, starting at about twenty bucks, and uh, they're really good shirts too. In fact, I'm Ian's, wearing, Ian's one. wearing one today. You can't ah. hurry up and smoke a cigar. It's perfect. Love that. Uh, so check them out at mycigarshirts.com. They sponsor us, so you please sponsor them. That would be also. Uh, awesome. I think uh, yeah. if he's not with us already, I think. It's Bruce Stark's birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, Stark. <laughs> to on Stark. Happy birthday to Bruce. That's a, that's a fantastic thing. You know, Adam just had a birthday a couple of weeks ago, Ooh. and I got one coming up. So, um, you know, maybe time to start shopping. Is all I'm saying. You know, Noted. I can direct you to a couple of very quality humidors around town, uh, and you can, uh, you know, you can pick just, up just, just about go, anything. You're right. Just go in yeah. there and go yeah. to town. Just, just what you know. I, I don't want you to feel like. There's a ceiling on how much you can spend. <laughs> Noted. Okay, so Noted. Uh, no, no price cap. Yeah, here. there's this, no. This there's, is not a way. To I don't, I don't party. want you to feel in in any way like you've overdone it. Yeah, this you know? is not a way to elephant party. You could just go exactly go for broke. We want to uh, thank our special guest last week, the uh, ever loving smoking and toasting wine expert Mark Burrell. It is always so fun when he is on the show, and not just because he brings wine. Although there is that, uh, he brought some great ones last week. In fact, um, there was about half a bottle left. Of uh, one of those reds that I took home, and it was. Oh, you took home the Beaujolais, right? Gone by the end. Of, yes, it was the yeah, Beaujolais. Same it was thing gone by the ours. end of the day. Woo, that was good. Um, so, if you did not check out that show, it's uh, it's great, like uh, wine suggestions for fall. And so, uh, Mark did his usual incredible thing. So, uh, so way to go. Uh, our show beer today, not one of the beers we're reviewing, but our show beer is the St. Arnold Oktoberfest, which I am so excited that it that it is out. It's actually been out for a couple of weeks, but this is the first one that I have purchased, and uh, so I got us a cold sixer of that to bring in to, uh, to, to use I the I had show to microphone yours. that whole experience. I know you did. It was almost like a soundtrack to the uh, uh, to the show. Do you like uh, the Slurpee drinks? <laughs> I'm wondering, actually, if uh, somebody owns the copyright to that, and we'll have to send them cash now uh, to the sound of slurping and burping. Uh, if if they don't, maybe we should copyright that ourselves. Slurping and burping. It's a, a subset of the Smoking and Toasting Show. <laughs> slurping and burping. Uh, interesting things to talk about today. Uh, more cigars to watch for. There's some new and interesting things coming out. And we <laughs> didn't get to this last week. There are six new, I uh, found a great article about six new New England breweries that you should be aware of. Right so if now. You, if you happen to live in the New England area or if that's a place that you uh, travel, it's almost leaf peeping time, which I always hated that phrase. But I've never heard that phrase. So, yeah, it's something. So people, when the leaves start to turn across like the Northeast and especially in New England, people go, especially to states like Maine and Vermont, and they go leaf peeping. Peeping. I didn't know and leaf peeping just... was a term. I will tell you, I, I had uh, uh, the occasion twice in my life to drive down the Bluegrass Parkway in, oh, yeah. in October. I, I bet that was beautiful. November, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. October. Oh my gosh, well, it is unbelievable. It's certainly picturesque, and that's why people will plan their you know vacation sometimes in autumn to go and and see those. So if you're doing that in the New England area, we have some breweries you might want to uh, visit while you're there. So we'll pass that list along including to you, including the Open Gate, the world's largest bottle of whiskey should be worth about two million dollars i'm for it and uh, we'll tell you about that coming up on the show plus uh drinking news our drinking news headline for today oh wait for it what happened on that last note that last score there my finger slipped oh okay <laughs> i was like was that on, was that on purpose because i thought it might be a chord to create tension yeah, and, and that's a drinking news teaser chord, if I ever heard one. Would be one to, to create tension. Our drinking news teaser headline today, 
you're not the only one who likes bourbon. All right, very good. Uh, so we'll look forward to that coming up on the show. And uh, we also have some some great lists we haven't had a chance to get into, and I'm hoping we will uh, today, including uh, new scotch bottles to try and eight expensive tequilas that are worth the money. So we hope to get to uh, some of that today. And, of course, uh, how to make a perfect whiskey smash. So, Ian, this recipe, I actually, I actually misspoke last week. I said it was from Liquor.com because I get a lot of recipes from there that I try. Mm -hmm. But this one's not from there. It's actually from the right. Rob report. From the Rob report. You remember that magazine where, you know, it'll be Everything. stories about how to take care of your private jet. It was and, <laughs> Yeah. And, so and, uh, I, was, I was a little shocked by the fact that it was from the Rob report, and it's a whiskey drink, and it didn't include, like, some insanely aged, yeah, oh yes. incredibly, yeah. like, you can't buy this bottle of whiskey. No, as a matter of fact, the suggested <clears throat> whiskeys that they say to make this drink with are actually very... You know, reasonably priced Buffalo Trace. Two of Trace, them they suggested I Elijah had on my Craig. shelf at Buffalo yeah. Trace and Elijah Craig right here. And another one that they suggested was Four Roses Small Batch, and I had a bottle of that that I brought in. So we so may we're... we may be making lots of whiskey smashes. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought what we would do. I've never made this drink before. Have you? No. All right. So I thought what we would do is when we get to the point of the show where we're going to make the drinks, we'll actually tell everybody what we're doing, explain how to make it, let people watch, and then you and I will mix up a whiskey smash each. And we will give them anonymously to Adam, and he can decide who's is the tastiest. That sounds good to me. Yeah. I mean, uh, look, can, I, competition, can yeah. I go ahead and show you like how I generally uh, make a cocktail? Sure. I'll, hold on a second. I'm going to borrow one of these glasses okay. a little ahead of time, okay? <clears throat> Are you all ready for this? This is how Ian makes a cocktail. I notice you use a couple of key ingredients there. Wait for it. Cocktail's not ready yet. Oh, okay. Gotcha. The, the tension mounts. There you go. All right. I noticed you used a couple of key ingredients there. Yes. Whiskey and water. Or ice. Ice, Frozen yes. water. Well, whiskey the ice, ice is what yeah. makes it a cocktail. Otherwise, it's just a whiskey. All right, right. And I then you, you have uh, a straw. You have the ability to stir it. So you no, can I didn't, I didn't actually the have the stirring the so, uh, sticks so, uh, or the little swizzler uh, straw mm -hmm, things, mm -hmm. right? So what I did is I improvised is I took a full-length straw, and I used my trusty pocket knife. You were a... a and, and cut it down. I, I kind of MacGyvered it, but this, you really this, did. Is, this is a cocktail uh -huh. for the ages right here. And and what do you call that? Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> And well, you should, my friend. <laughs> this uh, is this is very much how I make cocktails at my house for the most part. I, my wife does all the cocktail making. Yeah, so right. This should be interesting well, today. Well, you're uh, you're you're doing well there. How, how's it taste? <sighs> Delicious. Uh, good. I did good a good cocktail. Know. Have some interesting beers on the show today. What do we got? Um, so you know, Untitled Art, uh, the brewery out of mm -hmm. uh, Wanucky, uh, Wisconsin. We've had a number of their beers on the show before. We've liked them all, I think, and they've all been very interesting. They've been either, uh, you know, big, really uh, complex IPAs, or they've been like, you know, their name pastry is, stout. You know, their name are, is quite apropos. Yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. And and so many of the things that they have are a little off the beaten path uh, in terms of of the styles that uh, that they brew. Well, today we're trying something new from them. And it's their low calorie beer. That's all it's called. I mean, it's this just is called low calorie, low calorie beer? beer. Like the Untitled Art has been, you know, so uh, you know, so adept at naming their beers these very interesting and complex things. But we'll be trying their low calorie beer, and I think that what they're doing is they're basically taking aim. So it'll be interesting to see how good of a job they do. I think they're basically taking aim at the Michelob Ultra Drinker. Because they put the beer in one of those skinny cans, kind of like a uh -huh. uh, uh, seltzer, and it's like 94 calories and four carbs or something like that, and it's 4.5%. Uh, so I'm really curious, like, is this just going to be another, you know, better than a light beer because it's craft, or have they really stumbled onto something here? So it's going to be inter an interesting Sometimes thing. Sometimes the I'm packaging to makes it. a difference. I noticed, um, I, was in, I was in a Bucky's uh, not too long ago. Uh, I was in Bucky's. And you and several thousand other people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they have a little display, and it's all the, the popular candy bars like Snickers and, right. and all those other ones M &M's up there, right? And, and they're like, would you like a 100-calorie snack? Right? 
And so it's individually like 100 calorie versions of these bars. Of M and M's or they're Snickers so or... freaking tiny. <laughs> like they might be smaller than the little Hershey's minis that you oh, get. It's man. unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, that makes sense though, you know. Uh, <laughs> but it's interesting that they're marketing them that way. So, so I mean, you can drink 100 calories worth of beer if it's a mm-hmm. stout. It's like two sips right. and then stop. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's hard to go with just two <laughs> sips of the stout though. That's the problem. So it'll be interesting to see. I, I'm I can't wait for us to try that and see i mean i just can't imagine untitled art kind of making a token light beer you know what i mean (laughs) right like i think they must have something up their sleeve so we shall see now here's another uh brewery that i know you are familiar with ian dogfish head oh man they have a new ipa that's very interesting it is uh hazy o apparently they use um a lot of roasted malt and roasted oat in this mm, hazy IPA. Uh, so we will be trying well, Dogfish that. Dogfish Head it just pushes the boundaries. They're so fun. They really do. And it's so interesting because now that they <clears> are <throat> uh, a, a part of the company, uh, Boston Beer Company, Sam Adams mm-hmm. people uh, bought them, merged with them. It feels like Boston Beer Company, they're doing, they're kind of heading for that more mainstream craft drinker and dogfish head is going for the you know the crazy people you know right. what i mean i mean there some of their beers that they've put out like Midas touch and mm-hmm. oh man just like some of them are so outrageous and so fun to try yeah they really are they've, they've done a great job of coming up with different things and i still love their what is that one they do the once slightly a year? mighty or yeah, the, uh, no uh, the uh, um it's the one that has a little berry to it, but it, I, I'll think of it in a minute. It's got just the mm-hmm. greatest name. Uh, anyway, we'll be trying their Hazy O, Hazy IPA. And then from uh, here in Houston, Texas, Buffalo Bayou Brewing Company's Smoke on the Bayou. It's Smoke 2020. on the Bayou. Uh, have you had Smoke on the Bayou before? I have, but I believe, I don't know if they do it the same every year. I don't think so, because they put the year on the They put the, the year bar. on it, so yeah. that might just be for uh, for storing it for Could be, you yeah, know, yeah. aging purposes. Well, it should be about right. Right, if it's the 2020, is what nice. I'm thinking. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope that that's going to be good. Uh, plus, the newest celebrity whiskey is from a dead guy. We'll tell you all about that. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Right. Uh, so we'll tell you all about that coming up. I think it's going to be a fun show. And, of course, who knows what kind of you know mayhem will ensue when we try to make a cocktail actually on the program. So uh, looking forward to that. Um, so, Ian... How has your week been, and have you had an opportunity to smoke anything interesting week's along the way? Week's been good. I got, uh, of course, you know, we had uh, Tuesday off because uh, the place where I teach guitar has uh, was closed down for Tuesday mm-hmm. for Hurricane Day. You mm-hmm. know, we get that around here. But other places get snow days. Yeah, we, we get, get hurricane, hurricane days. days yeah. yes. <laughs> so we were closed down. So I ended up going to my uh, workshop <laughs> and getting some woodworking done. That was kind of fun. I also sorted out a whole ton of like all my you know when you're doing woodwork you tend to uh, hoard scrap wood you're mm-hmm. like oh i can do something with this tiny piece of something that i'll never right, actually do right, anyway, right. You know? <laughs> so i went through and I, I i took out basically a 55 gallon trash can full of scrap wood out of my wow. workshop and the best part about that is it doesn't look like i did any work in right it, right, right? it looks like nothing huge happened <laughs> canvas yeah i understand my but uh, i did my... go out to my uh uh patio this morning Sitting on one of my new lawn chairs that I made mm-hmm. because I was, you know, home. Uh, and I went out and sat on one of my new lawn chairs and I lit up a La Galera 1936 box press. Oh, nice. That's a, that's a great looking cigar. I've seen this cigar a whole bunch of times and I never bought it. Uh, I just bought one the other day and thought, you know, uh, this is one I'll just stick in humidor and try whenever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What a cool looking cigar. It is an extreme uh, box press. This was the Corona Gorda. This is a 5.5 by 46, 5.5 okay, by so 46. It's a big one. Um, uh, the uh, wrapper is an uh, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. The binder is Dominican uh, Creo. Uh, Creo. Criollo. 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 Cri- yo yo. <laughs> okay, the uh, filler. <laughs> I don't know how to say this, but. Uh, Criollo, 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 yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, Dominican, uh, the fillers, Dominican, uh, uh, Criollo, and Palato, Palato, oh Palato, yeah, Palato Cubano, which is, has a little bit of spice from what mm-hmm. I understand. It's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, the appearance on this dark chocolate and smooth, severely box pressed, firm overall, beautiful and classic La Galera band. Their band is so beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. The secondary uh, band on it was a 1936 box press band. The pre-light sniff on this very earth, very barnyard, very hay. Uh, the pre-light draw on this, uh, I used a clip. It was a nice uh, medium draw on there. Just mm-hmm. a little bit of effort to the draw, but not not much uh, in a pleasant way. Uh, 
the pre light drawn, it was cocoa <laughs> and hay and some cedar. The initial light was harsh. Really? Woo! It was harsh. Was it like pepper blast harsh no, or just harsh? It was Ooh. It was harsh. That's not good. This was like, ah, what is that? It was like a tangy, weird what I put strong tangy bitterness. It was harsh. The first puff of this. Uh it went away after just a few puffs. Okay. But man, it just it was like, what just happened? Yeah. Um Pepper and spices followed after that. The first third of this was sweet, uh, creamy and spicy. Loads of, uh, loads of flavors, including cedar, pepper, mocha, some clove, nutty flavors, underlying sweetness the whole time. Uh, the retrohale was cedar and nutty, solid ash, perfect burn. The retrohale on this cigar really made a big difference. It was such a wonderful retrohale on mm. this. The uh, second third of this, the strength ramped up here to a medium plus, gaining a bit of tingle on the tongue. Um, and I read up a little bit on that uh, uh, Piloto uh, Cabano uh, the, binder. The tobacco, apparently yeah. that has that spice that kind of does mm -hmm. that. That's that's kind of an expected thing when you have that in a cigar. Um Gained a bit of, t uh, a bit of uh, tingle on its own. Cedar is prominent. Underlying sweetness remains present. Uh, the retrohale, sweet cedar, and mocha. The retrohale was kind of evolving on it, doing kind of its own thing with this. It was really nice. The last third of this, it started picking up some, uh, the, some of that initial uh, light harshness, and an unpleasant chemical aftertaste kind of started happening towards mm. the very end. Now, I want how far, how far, like getting to the nub or like in the last third? Uh, just a little bit into the last third. Okay. Um, which, you know, I, I've had that on some cheaper cigars, uh, before, mm -hmm. and I don't even think that much about it because, well, if this cigar is only a couple dollars, not a big deal. Right. Uh, this cigar was only more than a couple dollars, only a little bit more than a couple dollars. It was six dollars. So okay. it wasn't. So a, that's an inexpensive cigar. It wasn't a really, really expensive cigar. So I thought to myself, well. I'm going to give it a 4.5, and, okay. and I'll tell you why it gets the 0.5 off. The harshness at the end, uh, La Galera is a company that uh, is not always on my radar, but every time I smoke one of their cigars, I'm always pleasantly surprised, mm -hmm. and I just kind of expected this cigar to be a little more, so due to my own expectations... That's why it uh, didn't quite get the 5. It didn't quite get there, because I thought that everything else I've had from them has always met or exceeded expectations, and this one just fell slightly short. And price to quality, just in case you're new to the show, a 5 on a scale of 1 to 10 would mean you got exactly what you paid for. So this one underperformed, but only yeah. tiny, tiny bit. I mean, right? you probably lose a quarter of the cigar to that harshness at the end. Yeah, that's not um, good. And that's not a lot. You know, some people put cigars out there anyway. I mm -hmm. usually smoke down, especially if it's a good cigar, I'll smoke mm -hmm. it down to a nub. Like, I'm burning my fingers even. Yes, sir. But uh, but that being said, I just didn't want that harshness to come up. And it, and it, it was uh, it was uh, foreshadowed by the initial light as well. Because right, it was right. very much that same flavor. I started feeling ramp up. And I ditched the cigar, you know, on the last third. But uh, not a bad smoking experience. Still, at $6, at $6 dollars, it's not bad, yeah. For $6, I, I might even go buy another one at some point and give it a second chance and just see if it happens again. Right, right. Because I could have gotten one that would just mm -hmm. totally got weird. Could've. Yep, totally could have. Well, I had uh, an interesting uh, cigar this week. I guess I've been on a Pepin Garcia roll for the past couple of weeks. I it's hard noticed to go as wrong I was, with Pepin Garcia. Uh, I noticed as I was putting, the, uh, uh, you know, putting my notes together uh, and getting ready to smoke this, I was like, oh, this is another Pepin Garcia, like I think three weeks in a row. So uh, <laughs> I may be uh, – don't worry, AJ. I'm still a fanboy. I'm still mm -hmm. with you. Uh, but I'm just taking a little Pepin vacation here. Uh, no, but um, – the cigar that I had was the San Cristobal Revelation Prophet. Now, San Cristobal, these are uh, all cigars done by Pepin Garcia mm -hmm. for the uh, people at um, <clears throat> Ashton. Mm -hmm. So it is a uh, it is a collaboration between Ashton and My Father Cigars. Okay, and uh, the the brand has been around for a while, but they've added, you know, a couple of different. You know, sort of branches to the tree, as it were, different, uh, you know, different blends and different flavors. They all have a really gorgeous band, one of the prettiest cigar bands out yeah, there. Yeah, it is beautiful. And yeah. if I'm not, if I'm not uh, mistaken, when San Cristobal came out, it was just one cigar, wasn't it? it was I just, believe that's just right. One yeah, cigar just one for a cigar. long time. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <clears throat> after a less expensive Pepin Garcia cigar that uh, he does for Holtz last week called the Old Henry, uh, I went with a slightly more expensive, uh, uh, what's considered at least to be one of his crowning achievements, which is this 
Ten Cristobal Revelation uh, profit. Um, the profits of Robusto, five and uh, a quarter by 54, and it sports a beautiful reddish brown Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper and a gorgeous, expensive looking band. As I was mentioning, uh, there were no pictures of bulldogs on this one, mm-hmm. although there was a parrot or some kind of a macaw, but it was still very colorful. It's kind of reminded me of the Isla Fiji rum uh, <laughs> right, right. Uh, 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 bottle. Um, but I digress. It, it's a beautiful band. Uh, by and filler are all Nicaraguan, and it's being descri- it's described uh, as being medium bodied, which would make it a little lighter than the sort of flagship San Cristobal. Uh, I line. just want to point out, I'm looking at the picture that you have posted on, uh, yeah. on it right now, and that is a boss looking cigar. Oh yeah, it really is. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's uh, it's almost like a milk chocolatey with yeah. a little bit of reddishness to the wrapper, and uh, the band is just gorgeous. Um, so uh, medium bodied, which is what they're saying that it is, uh, would make it a little lighter than the flagship San Cristobal line. The pre light on it was nice, full tobacco notes, uh, with a lot of um, uh, leather and oak. Uh, I used a punch and my lighter, and I was on my way. Nice Nicaraguan pepper blast to start off, but not too overwhelming. Uh, and when it settled down, I started to get notes of cedar and a very pleasant earthiness. And the flavors were really complex from the very beginning. Now, I've had a number of cigars that have kind of been that way lately, and they're really spoiling me because you know how some cigars. The complexity doesn't really kick in until about right. the, the second, third or so. Uh, man, this one got complex like right from the get-go, right the and it was, uh, it was a really, really wonderful thing. Um, uh, that also gave me the impression that the tobacco is uh, very nicely aged because of that complexity. Uh, I also picked up a subtle but very pleasant citrus note. Uh, burn was good, not razor straight, but very solid. Draw was perfect. As I got into the second third, that citrus really picked up a bit, and uh, it you know, kind of worked like a dancing partner with the pepper. I nice. Guess. Citrus and pepper are very different things, but the way these came together, it really did work, and it was uh, it was very uh, pleasant. I mean, lemon pepper chicken works. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> yes. Uh, cigars seemed to get more and more complex as it smoked. By the final third, a nice creamy sort of a chocolate flavor had entered the mix, and all of the cigars' notes were playing very well together. Uh, the pepper was mostly on the retro hail, which was interesting because I had expected it to ramp back up by the time. I was close to being done, uh, but it was uh, it was more subtle and was on the retro hail. Construction was great overall. I only touched up the burn line once. The ash held on for well over an inch, but I was really afraid that I was pressing my luck, so I uh, I tipped it off. And that got me to thinking, by the way. The MyCigarShirts.com should do a special Ian edition shirt with a target on it for the ash. <laughs> and you should see when your ash falls how close, like you get points based on where the ash hits your shirt. Right. Don't you think it would be a good idea? Could we, could we just have one that has some like ash stains all yeah. over it already yeah. and then each one has like a, a this was from this score. cigar yeah. and this was from this <laughs> cigar right. i like that uh construction as i said was really good on it um overall i thought the san cristobal revelation profit was quite good i i pegged it at a little more of a medium to full they were saying you know when i looked it up on the website they were saying it was more medium bodied but i definitely Definitely thought it was a little north of that. Um, uh-huh. It was about an $8 cigar. Uh, I got it in a sampler, so I probably got it for a little less than that. Um, so let's go with thumbs up. Recommended a solid 5 P to Q. 8 bucks is a... Uh, a little high for a Robusto, but I didn't feel like I was overpaying. It would, it, it felt like it stepped in and, and was a solid 7 So I, I recommend it. And, you know, it just just to enjoy... The, the subtlety of the way that the flavors mixed and combined mm-hmm. from the very beginning. And the, you, you got that sense that it was really very well-aged tobacco. I just made for a very pleasant that smoke. That makes me so want one of those. I would do that again. I, I really, I really mm. would. And if it had been 6 bucks, I'd have been, like, jumping up and down. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but, but at 8 bucks, it... It performed about how it needed to, nice. was was my take. So uh, so there you go. All right, we got a lot to do, including make drinks. I see you brought your own shaker. I brought my own as well. Uh, we've got some mint here. We've got lemon. We've got simple syrup. And, of course, we've got whiskey. And those basically are the ingredients in the whiskey smash. So we'll get to uh, we'll get to making some of those coming up. Plus, we'll sample this. Uh, first beer is going to be this uh, low-calorie beer from Untitled Art. It just seems almost like a, a, a walking contradiction of sorts. But we'll, <laughs> right? we'll get to it uh, Coming up next, it's Smoking and Toasting. Thank you for joining us for 251. <laughs> oh, wrong beer. Welcome back. 
It is oh, yeah. smoking and toasting. Our program is brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com. Uh, great shirts for cigar lovers on the web. My birthday's coming up. Buy, buy me anything there. I'd be thrilled. Uh, MyCigarShirts.com because... Cigars. <clears throat> yes, uh, they've got great stuff. So um, there's so many celebrity beverage products coming out uh, lately. The week that you were out in, we got to talk with the guys who were doing the ACDC I'm beers. I'm so sorry. And I they're that. quite good. I, I keep forgetting to bring them in, but I'm holding back two for you. I've got one one of each holding from what they sent. The beers. Yeah, that'll, that'll well, work. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but in any case, we've got um, we've got so many celebrities entering the beverage uh, market uh, that it's almost it's almost confusing now. And, and and some of the products are really good, and some of them are not. And uh, so it's just just like anything else, I guess you have to, have to sample and try, and we'll try to help you do some of that. So at some point before the year is up. When this uh, product rolls out, we will have to go and buy some and sample it for people on the show so we can tell them what it is. It is, to the best of my knowledge, the first time a dead guy has released a whiskey. <clears throat> Grain and Barrel Spirits has partnered with the Elvis Presley estate to launch two Elvis Presley whiskeys, and they're coming out this year. Elvis Presley whiskeys. <clears throat> yep. Uh, they are both... Post uh, posthumous <clears throat> whiskeys. Yes. Uh, bo both expressions, rye and uh, Elvis whiskey, uh, were sourced and blended by an expert team of whiskey experts. Now, I read that the way it was written. <laughs> an, an expert, expert team, team of whiskey, whiskey experts. experts. <laughs> Methinks they just protest too much. If it wasn't for football, <clears throat> yeah. I would not be playing football today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what was it John Madden said once when I was watching him? He goes, you know, you want to score John the Madden. touchdown because, because, because the team that scores the touchdown, uh, that's the generally the, that's how you make the points. That's how you win the game. The team that scores the most touchdowns is going to win. Yeah. The dude, John Madden is, uh, was My John was Madden's amazing. not very good, yes. but, but, you know. But Maddenisms are so fun to make. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, they are. Uh, I, I love watching it's, uh, it's basically all you really have to do is state the absolute most obvious thing. Yeah. And, and, kind of, <laughs> and do it in that voice. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, it kind of works. So, so Elvis Rye will be 90 proof, 45% ABV, a straight Indiana rye. Uh, they say its aroma will be sweet rye grassiness, followed by hints of citrus and spice. <laughs> Flavor, toasted oak, butterscotch, vanilla wafers, and a hint of pepper with a beautiful, sweet, complex finish with a velvety mouthfeel. That will be the Elvis I just rock. want you to know you are on fire on the comments right now. Oh, okay? yeah? Let me back up just a little oh, bit, okay? Because uh, apparently we're having fun. People are hating me today. <laughs> <laughs> They're hating on me. It's okay. No, no. Liliana. Hi, Liliana, by the way. Hi, Liliana, Liliana said your Spanish is very good. I think oh. she's talking about when we were talking about Criollo. Because that was Criollo. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then... Um, Eric Loren says, <laughs> I heard malt liquor goes good with that. <laughs> Alan Denny says, uh, aside from missing us, he said, uh, Cruz is cruising IPA. Yeah. It's going to have to be a thing, apparently. And then he asks, does Christopher Hart approve of Elvis whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to take a guess and say it's going to have an uphill battle for him. But I want to point this out. good. From everything you said, it sounds like a money grab. Yeah, it kind of does. It, kinda it really does. just sounds like a money grab versus, like, there, if Elvis was like, all about whiskey, mm -hmm. and I don't remember. You know, I, I remember uh, peanut butter and banana sandwiches right, and bacon, right? right. Burnt bacon. I, I remember uh, a few other things about Elvis, but I don't remember him being like mm, a big I whiskey drink guy. This whiskey, yeah, you know? no. But well, there is one connection because the flavor on the Elvis rye, as described here in their article, uh, is toasted oak butterscotch vanilla wafers. Elvis uh, loved him some vanilla wafers. So yeah. there's so there's a tie-in. So so the, they should just put like Elvis's Nilla away for whiskey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That that would probably sell pretty well. I would almost <laughs> have to buy one. You know, <laughs> I mean they've got the peanut butter whiskey that Dave Grohl likes. Remember, that stuff's yeah. doing really well. I mean, if they just put the package that looked like Nilla wafers in and put whiskey under it, it'd be amazing. <laughs> I would buy it. I, I don't sense. know. Like to me, that sounds like a money grab. Prove me wrong, Elvis. Yes, uh, yes. whiskey people. Well, listen. Prove uh, me wrong. Uh, the Bob Dylan whiskeys are fantastic. You know, Bob Dylan was involved. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're talking about post uh, posthumous Elvis whiskey. Like Elvis was not known for whiskey, or and he wasn't whiskey. involved. He wasn't involved. Yeah. It's just the state is allowing them to put it, his name on there. It so feels, it feels like a licensing deal, doesn't it? That's all it is. You know, like that's, just that, a licensing. That's really deal. all it feels like. So, but the whiskey could still be good. It's possible. I mean, Metallica Blackened is a good whiskey. Yeah, Dave Pickerel. Well, okay. All right. I mean, <laughs> well. I know Dave Pickerel was a legend. 
Dave Pickerel. I, I know he was the one and only Dave Pickerel, but it says right here that both expressions, the rye and the whiskey, were sourced and blended by an expert team of whiskey experts. An expert team of whiskey experts. That's what it says. That I'm not is one that, of, that needs to be a shirt right there. <laughs> uh, this... I'm an expert on the expert team of whiskey experts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. My dad always used to is say. Is Chris on the expert team of whiskey experts? I don't know. I know he's a whiskey expert, but I don't know if he's on the expert team the expert of whiskey <laughs> experts. Uh, and by the way, hi to Alan Denny. I miss you, brother. I haven't seen you in too long. <laughs> Alan Denny said, smoking Nat Sherman and toasting my lord. Oh, yeah. I, I got some Nat Sherman to talk about. Oh, I miss that guy. I need to go down to see him. I, I might have a little time I got tomorrow. some Nat Sherman to, to talk about off. today when we get to the uh, cigars to watch for. And I'm and I'm glad that Alan is with us. Although I'm, I'm thinking now, I think he's going to talk on Fridays. I'm going to talk Nat Sherman. So oh, I don't know. We'll we'll have to we'll have to go down there and visit him. Though we are we are overdue. So uh, so welcome to the show. It is smoking and toasting. We are all about uh, <laughs> oh craft yeah. We're beer. getting back to that now. Craft beer, <laughs> fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. I love uh, 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 the lemon here. Just gives me something to toss around and play with during the show. I should we should do this more often. So I I have this untitled art can in my hand. Yes. And normally I would just crack it open and start pouring. So there's a couple funny things about it yeah um first off it's it feels wrong but just the shape and, and the it's height a seltzer right? can yeah or, yeah you know but, it's, it's but it's and we talked about this weird. i think a little bit during the break but uh as of a couple of years ago uh Michelob Ultra went to that shape for its cans i think the yes. idea was they're implying skinnier you know i think the, i mean i think it's that literal you know, skinny and, can for skinny beer all you know? seltzers Yes. Use this can. Just almost all of them. You're right. Yeah, you're right. right. Uh, so it's you're right. It feels wrong, but the, but then again, this is untitled art. I mean, I, I don't know. I think they've batted a thousand on everything I've tried from them. Also, the label's on a little crooked, but it is a beautiful label. Yeah, well, it might be hard to put a label on straight in a can that tall. I don't know. Uh, but uh, but let's try it out. Uh, let, you know, uh, now what is it? Well, you can you can tell me what the can says after you pour it. All right. And we, and we do a little a little sampling here because I'm actually very curious because you know see it, it sounds okay when you open it, but it's not quite the same either. Well, I, I will just say that of the low calorie ish beers that we've tried. I've thought that uh, several of the IPAs have done a good job. I still don't enjoy drinking them as oh. much as I enjoy, you know, something a little fuller. It looks like a seltzer. <laughs> it kind of does. Now let's look at that. I'm glad what I'm... the heck? Wow. But but you know what? That actually is more color than a Michelob Ultra. Michelob Ultra is almost colorless. They'll tell you it's a straw color. Uh, and that, I would say this is a straw color. It's, it's the color of water after you left one little piece of straw in it for 15 minutes. <laughs> well, it's going to be interesting because clearly from the design of the can, uh, clearly they're going after the Michelob Ultra drinker here is, and is trying that... to say to him, hey, you can have a better beer. Uh, this could, this could also be known as low odor beer. All right. Tell me, yeah, <laughs> tell, me, <laughs> tell me what it says about calories and carbs and ABV on the can. Uh, it says 95 calories and three carbs. That's not bad. I think uh, honestly, I think that um, I think Miller Lite is four. I, I, Michelob Ultra is it three? I think it may be three. Uh, so, so uh, the artwork on here uh, is beautiful by Stephanie Hammond. It says on here. So that's a uh, right. That's, that's a, worth a, note. That's there's not much on the nose, but then there is there is nothing. I mean, I always make fun of Michelob it's, Ultra as being beer flavored water. It's, it's it's near colorless, near odorless. Mm -hmm. There's a, I mean, there's a little bit. It has that classic, uh, almost pilsner kind of, uh, uh, but very faint. Like, I'm, like there used to be a pilsner in this glass kind of thing. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, and it was washed and set on the counter. Yeah, you know, somebody uh, just rinsed it and yeah. set it aside. Uh, I'm very curious to see what you think. Have about you tried this. it? I just took my first sip. I'm yes. gonna try it. I'm gonna take very, my, very curious. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and let you take your second sip, mm -hmm. and I want to take my first one here. Um, there's a slight lemon flavor to yes, it. Yes, there is a little bit of that, and a little bit of uh, uh, of like a Granny Smith apple uh, on on the finish. It has a subtle flavor. Mm -hmm. And by subtle, I mean very subtle. You know, we really should. And have by flavor, done... I mean very subtle. You know what we should have done? We should have done this next to a Michelob Ultra to see how they. Did you buy more than one of these? Pair, no, I just bought one, but I, I know where I got it. I can maybe we maybe we have to do those side side because I think uh, due to lack of basis of comparison, mm -hmm. um, 
This is near flavorless. Of course, that being said, I did make a cocktail which consisted of Elijah Craig and a small chip of ice. Right. And then I also uh, have been have been drinking on our the Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest yeah. which is delicious. Well, I don't think this is bad, and I think it's particularly good cold. Uh, but there is some flavor here. It is clearly a light beer. I mean, there's got to be. I'm guessing there's just only so much you can do when you're keeping the calories and the ABV low like that, right? I mean, just like I, I how much flavor I can see you put what's in there? happening now? Like, I just had to take a big sip mm -hmm. to see if I could get some flavor in there, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's it. There's not much. There's not much there's there. Not much there's there. not much there. Uh, uh, Wiki Brian uh, posted Elvis never did drink a lot, although he once about killed himself drinking uh, peach brandy. <laughs> Who hasn't, buddy? I could see where Who you could hasn't? kill yourself on peach brandy. <laughs> I could. Ian, I don't dislike this. For for what it is, I think it's actually quite good. But the style is a tough one for me to um, to go all in on, you know? But if look, if you're if you're on a, a low carb diet and you really can, are concerned about can somebody that, out there it's not a bad up, place to the, go. What's the uh What's the um, calorie and carb content of like a uh, vodka, vodka soda? Just a straight up vodka soda. That'd be interesting to see. Yeah. Because frankly, if it's comparable to this, I'd be you're vodka going, soda. You go in vodka 100%. soda. One hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm with you. One hundred percent. Yeah, I will say it's a bit refreshing. It's crispy. Mm -hmm. It's not offensive. There's just nothing really going on. All right. Let me ask you this: this or a uh, uh, hard seltzer? Oh, this. Yeah. This. This does not have a disgusting uh, fake sugary aftertaste, right, fake that, sweetener. Right, that sweetener taste, yeah. It doesn't have that. And there are very few uh, hard seltzers that do. Um, there's uh, there's one from um, Eureka Heights. It's actually mm -hmm. pretty uh, pretty tasty. There's yep. uh, The St. Arnold's is pretty good. The St. Arnold's. I mean, there was one more that we had. Was it an Oscar Blues one? Mm-hmm. Like there are very few of those that, that uh oh the Topo Chico one the is, Topo Chico is one less was great yeah less offensive than the mm -hmm. rest as well. I remember that. I would say though uh, this has a little more beer flavored. All right, well, vodka and club soda with a lime is uh 106 calories is what we got on here from Tracy. Um, I would definitely go vodka club soda over this. Over this, yeah. But I will say uh, that this is you know. This is drinkable. It's not like, you know what I mean? Sometimes if I'm at somebody's house and they offer a beer and all they have is Michelob Ultra, sometimes I just pass. Right. If it was this, I would take one. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let's let's do this. Maybe uh, uh, maybe one of the next episodes. We, we need to get one of these mm -hmm. and a Michelob Ultra. And side by side. You know what? Uh, have we done a locale taste test? I think we did a we, very long time ago, and there are lots back. of new, there are lots, more, there are lots right? of new ones. Yeah, uh, there's locale and low carb IPAs all over the place, and uh, uh, so, Dogfish Head, slightly mighty. Uh, right, I remember tasting some of those. I think we did a locale mm -hmm. taste test. I think kind we did. Think it we might did. be fun to revisit that. And uh, Eric Lorenz just says Sprite is better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it might be interesting because because I just don't have a lot of. Basis for comparison, right? Like, right. If I was on a very low carb, low calorie diet right now, um, and I was starving for beer, this mm -hmm. might fit the bill. But I don't, yeah. it's, it's tough as as it as it stands right now. It's flavorless. Yeah. Well, um, I, I don't I, I don't mind it. And uh, you know, my wife brought this home from the grocery store. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, untitled lard, and it's tall, and it's oh. It's a light bit. Like I, I, I was so surprised because these guys, I think the last thing of theirs we tried on the show was like a, a sticky bun pastry stout. Yeah. They tend to be and, over and the top. And it was like yeah, yeah. it was like thirteen uh, percent or something, like ridiculous, <laughs> like that. And and oh, the cans the are beautiful. On this? I think it's four. Four point two. Yeah. Four point two. Yeah. So, yeah, you could drink a lot. You of know, them. I'm I'm gonna um, I'm gonna be situationally aware here as well since we're. Since we're sitting here with all this very rich stuff, mm -hmm. this kind of thing floating on a river or sitting out in the sun by the pool, yes, yes, and uh, and in some kind of koozie that will hold these slim cans because mm -hmm. uh, it just feels weird in my hand. <laughs> um, 
would probably actually be nice and refreshing. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, even the the most gentle of cigars would bury this. Oh yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's almost like not. Uh, yeah, it's not to be paired. But uh, I don't know. I, I thought it's interesting though. I kind of dug it in in its own watery way. I mean, this might be a beer that goes with the low calorie, low carb food. I don't know. I, I don't know. But 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 I'm just thinking like sometimes you know one of the things that's hardest to do. If you decide you're going to go on like a low carb diet yeah, for a while yeah. or something, one of the hardest things to do is like, what am I going to do? Because I'd love to enjoy also, having a potatoes beer. Potatoes are delicious. Well, they, yes, they are. But but to me, I can give up the potatoes easier than I can give up the beer if I'm going on a, a diet like that. So to have something that you can go to and have a beer every once in a while, you'd be surprised, I bet, how good that is if you haven't had yeah, a beer so for a little while. Yeah, so that's a know? situational thing, and and yeah. I haven't been put in that situation, and I'm not going to say much more because, frankly, I'd hate to be found in that situation. I understand. I understand. And then go, man, this beer is actually pretty good. Yeah. All those words I said, I'm now eating. <laughs> or drinking, as <laughs> or the drinking, case may be. Yes. <laughs> All right. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, uh, several things to discuss, including uh, cigars to watch for. And then in our next longer segment, we will actually attempt to uh, do a little cocktail creation here. We will make a whiskey smash. Oh, it's going down. Yeah, it's, it should be fun. So uh, we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. It is smoking and toasting. <laughs> so I thought we were... Welcome back. It is smoking and toasting. Our program is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. We are brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com because cigars. cigars. Uh, Ian, I don't know if you knew this, but I can actually juggle lemons. Let's see it. Uh, as long as there's only two. <laughs> <laughs> and even that, I'm pushing it. Uh, I never, I never like understood like how jugglers do it. You know what I mean? So I get the theory of it. Yeah. And I've even seen how it happens, but uh, no, it's not something yeah. I ever said. For me, once, even, it's even tough to get that done right you know what i mean add in a third and i'm lost and some of them are juggling three four five at a time oh, yeah. it's crazy uh so yeah i don't like watching clowns but i i will i will accept jugglers uh jugglers no clowns no mimes but jugglers get a thumbs up from me i kind of like it oh you're not a fan of the mime uh or, or the clown no or no clown. childhood childhood things just uh just didn't didn't go well in that area mm. yeah so, um, you know, Abe Flores is the brand owner of PDR uh, Cigars. And uh, every year he makes this one particular cigar only for his personal consumption, him and his close friends and family, uh, on and around his birthday. And he's now decided to make it available to everybody. Uh, so it's one of the cigars uh, to watch for. It is the thinnest size in the El Trovador line, and it started shipping last week on September 12th, which is his birthday. Uh, nice. It's a little Vitola, he said. I only made for myself, and it's my favorite size in the El Trovador brand. Uh, as I traveled, people always asked what I was smoking and where they could purchase it. So he decided to finally just right. make them available. It's a 5 by 44 uh, and it comes in both the Rosado and Maduro lines. Uh, both have Nicaraguan binders and fillers, but they have different wrappers. Uh, and it sells for six ninety eight per cigar. comes in boxes of 24. Uh, Bernard Del Rio. Mm-hmm. Also makes the Obsidian, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic, inexpensive smoke. Mm -hmm. If you see those. Obsidian is a good cigar. Yeah, they're a fantastic, inexpensive smoke. All right, Alan Denny, you listening? Alan Denny. Disgruntled fans. It's funny. I, I use Alan's name, and then the next word I say is disgruntled. Uh, disgruntled fans of the old Timeless collection. The Nat Sherman <laughs> Timeless. Uh, who thought it was gone forever will be getting it back by the end of next week. Who's making it? Uh, it is now under the ownership of uh, Ferio Tego. Timeless Cigars was purchased from uh, the parent company that owned Nat Sherman, mm -hmm. and they're going to attempt to uh, keep the brand alive and keep making it, which is kind of cool because Timeless was. Oh, they're going to they're match the yeah, blend. Yeah, and the, Timeless else. was pretty good cigars. They're boxed, interesting to see. Timeless was a good cigar. They are boxed, they're, warehoused, and ready to occupy human shelf space once again. Awesome looking cigars. Mm hmm. 
Yeah, they, they really are. Uh, Fiat Otego uh, co-owner uh, Michael Herkelotz told Cigar Aficionado that Davidoff of Geneva, USA, which uh, distributes his brand, is taking orders for Timeless, and they anticipate the orders to go out in less than two weeks. Now, it was originally owned, as you know, by Nat Sherman International, mm-hmm. Inc., uh, and it faced an uncertain future when the tobacco giant uh, Altria, after basically crapping all over the premium cigar industry and telling federal regulators, oh, yeah, it's fine, go ahead. Uh, you know, treat yeah, we'll us, figure treat us it unfairly. Out later, whatever. We'll figure it out later. And then they shut down their whole Nat Sherman business anyway, and which worked out for me because I had gone to, the, I'd gotten to the point where I wouldn't buy a Nat Sherman no. ever. Uh, and but once they shut it down, I was like, okay, for the tobacconists who had some in their stock yeah. before they were discontinued, now I can have one. Now I'll buy one to help them get rid of it. And then, of course, uh, now that they're actually put out by someone who has respect for the concept of an actual handmade, well-crafted cigar, I will. Uh, I will also uh, make be make, making that purchase. Uh, of course, they shut down uh, the Nat Sherman uh, brand and the Nat Sherman townhouse in New York City, which mm-hmm. was one of the, quite frankly, was one of the coolest places. To I've go. never been there. It was very very cool. Uh, anyway, uh, they just said they had no interest in continuing the. Uh, premium cigar division. I think we probably knew that when they, uh, <laughs> you uh, think, when they, uh, you know, crapped all over the cigar industry. And Jeremy Piven, uh, the cigar-loving actor who's been known, uh, well known for portraying um, Ari Gold in the uh, cable TV series Entourage, the mm-hmm. the uh, sort of high uh, high octane agent. Uh, he's coming out with his own cigar. He is uh, teamed up with Dion Giolito. Who uh, does the Ilusone brand? Oh, nice! And uh, he uh, is doing the Jeremy Piven collection. Uh, collection, rather. It's debuting with one size, which will be called the Piv Robusto. He says he's been smoking cigars for about twenty years. Uh, he fell in love with cigars on a trip to Cuba, and uh, was just you know he's been on the Cigar Aficionado cover. He was part of the Entourage cast, and uh, he is uh, making this new cigar a fattish Robusto, five inches long by fifty-two, and it is made in Nicaragua. Nicaragua with all Nicaraguan uh, tobaccos, and uh, the tobacco was grown by Eduardo, Eduardo Fernandez, who is the owner of Aganor Salif. Nice. So, uh, so it's got this has got some pedigree. It's not yeah, just, yeah. Uh, it's not just a uh, uh, you know celebrity slapping their name on something. And he does know Jeremy Piven does know a thing or two about cigars. So, uh, so fun times. You know, Aganor Salif uh, it makes me smile a little bit because you remember early mm-hmm. early on one of our shows we actually had right before they changed their name they were mm-hmm. Casa. Fernandez. Yes, I remember. And there was confusion between, confusion between Casa AJ Fernandez and, and AJ Fernandez. Yeah, so they turned yeah. to Aganorsa and Leaf. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in fairness, Aganorsa was run by Eduardo Fernandez. No relation, right. but it's a common enough name yeah. that, uh, you know, or there might have been relation somewhere way, way back, but it's not like they were. You but know, the companies brothers weren't related. And family, yeah, the yeah. companies weren't related, exactly. So, uh, Anyway, so those are some cigars to watch for, and I like telling you about those so you can kind of keep your eye open for them in the stores because when you go in and you go, I want to try something new, sometimes that can be a little overwhelming too. Yeah. So they, if you go, oh, yeah, there is that uh, there is that Piv Robusto with Jeremy Piven. So. <laughs> that Piv Robusto. Piv Robusto. So, uh, yeah, we got another beer to dry. This one is the um, one that I was telling you about from Dogfish Head. And can I first just say, I don't know if Dogfish Head can make a bad beer. Like, I, I don't, I just don't, everything I've had from them, I have liked on some level, whether it's been something really, you know, uh, big and complex or whether it's been something, uh, you know, something smaller. This is an IPA that is made, I'll let you read it off the this can. This is not there, but, odorless. Uh, this is not odorless. That's good to know, especially <laughs> after our, uh, after our last beer. Uh, I thought a... we, I thought we'd maybe get to this one quickly after we, after we had that last one that was a little bit, uh, I've got so much stuff on going taste. on in front of me. Side. Well, figure soon, out which... soon you'll be making drinks, my friend. Soon I'm pouring it'll be left-handed, smash. just so you know. Uh, okay. Well, is that uh, uh, is that still a good skill for you? Can you play the guitar left-handed? Uh, no, but I can play a left-handed guitar. Uh, okay. So that just means it's strung differently, right? Yeah, it's basically upside yeah. down. All right. But you can play that or a uh, right-handed guitar. One huh? night at a jam night, uh, I got stuck playing a left-handed guitar, and, uh, and I ended up Playing. Oh, that one's yours. Oh, sir. that one is mine. Mm-hmm. I ended up playing uh, all on the watchtower. Mm. How did it go? Upside down. It actually, so the chord shapes, like just up, making them upside down and backwards. Uh, I figured that out pretty quick. 
<laughs> and then, uh, but soloing is really bizarre. Yeah, I, bet. I bet. Down is up, up is down. It's bizarro guitar. Uh, so as you were saying, Ian, and you're absolutely correct, this one is not our, odorless. Oh, so uh, our oh so juicy uh, hazy IPA brewed with one malted, two rolled, three naked oats, and four oat milk. Hmm. Um, that is pretty much all the information this came. Oh, wait, 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 mm -hmm. uh, 7.1%. Okay. okay. That's a step up from the, uh, from the, um, low calorie beer. This is neither odorless nor flavorless. No, it's got a lot of flavor, actually. I'm picking up on the, uh, roasted oat, mm -hmm. the roasted malt. And uh, and still a bit of that citrus uh, sweetness, that citrus haziness there's a, from uh, the hazy IPA. There's a uh, at the very end of this flavor. There's a. It almost has a. Um, it's got this citrusy thing going, and then the very end of it, there's a sweetness that's like the uh, like a um, like a glazed donut almost. Well, I think that's the oat, don't you? The sweetness, probably. It's, you know, it's what's interesting is the last uh, beer that I had that mentioned oat prominently was from Untitled Art. They had an oat uh, IPA uh, that was really quite good. But I think I like this better. I think it's a little more citrusy and not quite so bready. Because you don't think of IPAs as bready. That, you know, that's maybe other other styles, but not, this not is so fantastic. much IPAs. It is very well balanced, isn't it? This is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Dogfish Head is... Uh, this goes right up on one of my favorite IPAs we've had on the show. No kidding. Yeah, this is fantastic. Because you're not the IPA guy, but... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but for you to buy in on an IPA, I always feel like I've done well somehow. <laughs> you know what I yes, mean? Yes, <laughs> seek my approval. <laughs> dance. You know, it's puppet dance. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> sometimes I get. Sometimes my my innies become outies. That's you know? it's quite all right. It's quite all right. I think people are used to it by 251 episodes. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I I enjoy this. I, I, this is just. I think it's fantastic. This is so good. I don't know if it's. A seasonal or a limited time, or if it's one they continue, you know, plan to continue keeping in their lineup. I have noticed that the uh, the slightly mighty, the locale IPA they make um, is still around. It's been around yeah, now more than that a one's year, been so apparently pretty popular. That must be a, a regular part of their lineup. But with some breweries, it's hard to tell. But they I, did another one that I think was a flash for a little bit. That Sequench mm -hmm. Ale is that the one mm -hmm. I'm thinking of, mm -hmm. or is that a seasonal? No, uh, no wasn't Sequ was Sequench them? Yes. It was, and I think that was mm -hmm. a flash. That was an interesting beer. That was the one that was a little salty. And then, you know, the one I was trying to think of earlier in the show, I still haven't thought of the name of it, but I I remember that it has something to do with a song by the Flaming Lips. Bedbugs and Ballyhoo. That's not, that's a, that's that's not a. I know what you're talking about, and uh, I can't think yeah, of it. Uh, uh, what's that? It had dragon in the name. Oh. Dragons and puff mellows or something like that. That's not right either. Yeah, dragon. Something berries. Dragons and something berries. Yeah, dragons and yeah. something berries. Adam Adam is is absolutely right. Uh, but no, um, Bed Bugs and Ballyhoo was an Echo and the Bunnymen song, I think. <laughs> uh, and I can't believe I just dropped an Echo and the Bunnymen reference. We Man, are way deep on old. this one here. Yeah, we really, really are. All right. Um, I, I think that beer is exceptional. I That's recommend fantastic. it highly. Smoking and Toasting will absolutely be influencing sales directly because uh, I'm going to get some more of that on the way home. This is an IPA that you could easily pair with a mild to medium cigar as Absolutely. Well. And, and it would hold up. And, and IPAs are difficult, as we've talked about, to pair with cigars because a lot of times that hot bitterness doesn't allow you. But what they've managed to do here is not have the bitterness but still have the hops. If a that little makes classiness sense. on the label here. Uh, mm -hmm. Brewed and uh, canned by Dogfish Head Craft Brewery, Milton, Delaware. Um, and bring. Branningsville, uh, PA, Cincinnati, Ohio, blah, 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 in collaboration with the Boston Beer Company. Mm hmm. Nice. Yeah. So I think Boston Beer Company is going to do the more sort of like um, mainstream yeah. craft beers, if you will. Uh, Sam Adams, obviously, being an example of a mainstream, what I would call a mainstream craft beer. And I think Dogfish Head is going to continue to be just wonderfully weird. And I, I have that. ultimate respect for Boston Beer Company. I do, too. Yeah, I, I have met Sam uh, uh, Sam Cook, the, the guy that used to do all their The guy who's uh, not the golden-throated pitch guy. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's very interesting, uh, very nice man, super passionate about beer. Yeah. Like, the way that he comes across in those commercials and stuff. I love those exactly commercials. exactly how he is in person. He's just super he was, passionate about beer. I think, like, commercial-wise, commercially wise, 
he was one of the first ones that like would show you, hey, this is hops. This is how you right, right. Like, yeah, he I mean, showed we, people what the ingredients like, wow. for it looks like. Yeah. You know, I, I whereas remember. I, you know, Miller and Budweiser can't do that because you know, hey, this is rice. Yeah, right. This is you know what rice looks like. <laughs> <laughs> here it is from Uncle Ben, and uh, uh, here it is from Two Minutes. <laughs> right. uh, no, you know, I remember he used to have this way that he would describe. He would say that a good because a lot of people didn't like if the their beer had too much of a of a head of foam mm-hmm. on it, right? And he he was one of the first one to tell people, no, no, a head of foam on your beer is a good thing. Mm-hmm. He said that in a perfectly brewed beer, if you drop the bottle cap into your glass, it would float on the foam like a happy little boat. <laughs> he was kind of the Mister Rogers of uh, of uh, craft beer, if you think about it. Everybody nice. loves him, and uh, he comes up with a unique way to tell you stuff. Oh. You know? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying. Good job, Cruz. Good right, job. Let's uh, let's take a break. When we come back, it is cocktail time, my friend. The ingredients are here. There's a big knife. There's lemons. Uh, <laughs> I, if if we don't kill ourselves doing this, we will have cocktails in hand, and then not only will we be sampling them, but we'll pour, we'll each pour. A little bit of uh, uh, a cocktail. cocktail into one of these plastic cups. We'll give that to Adam, and he will determine which one of these is the best. If, nice. the, if there is a standout. So we'll see how we do. <laughs> In the meantime, I'll juggle. Man. Welcome back. It is Smoking and Toasted, and it is the program that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. We oh, are And hand-squeezed lemons. And hand-squeezed lemons, which Ian's doing right now to get the uh, lemon juice ready for our cocktail. So this is all about the Whiskey Smash and uh, the Rob Report, which uh, I'm looking at a... Uh, I'm looking at right now. I'm on the Rob Report website where this uh, where this menu is uh, for the for the whiskey smash, and the ad is for the MYS Monaco Yacht Show in uh, in September. Oh, of course, twenty two through twenty five. And I'm just looking to see if there's any other ads. Now that seems to be the prevailing one. Uh, but anyway, it's it's a very interesting article. Uh, how to make a perfect whiskey smash: the cocktail that turns bourbon into a refreshing uh, summer drink. Uh, the whiskey smash, they say, was a solution uh, to the persistent problem with whiskey sours. Not the flavor, but the abrasiveness. Uh, not the message, but the tone. Drinking a whiskey sour, they say, uh, in, in its most basic construction, which is bourbon, lemon, and sugar, uh, is like if somebody complimented you but did it with a high decibel profanity. This is the Rob Report we're, we're talking about. Um, so anyway. I was going to say, that's not how your friends talk to you? The whiskey smash is different now, they say, than when it was invented, not just in degree but in type. When it emerged in the 1830s, it was made of uh, whiskey, sugar, and mint, essentially a mint julep without the precious metal cup or the crushed ice. And then over the next hundred years, it would get overshadowed by the more famous mint julep and ultimately forgotten. Fast forward to the 1990s, and Dale DeGroff, a New York bartender as responsible as anyone on earth for the mixology renaissance we now enjoy, began making the drink at the Rainbow Room and called it the Whiskey Smash. The familiar whiskey, sugar, and mint, but this time with lemon wedges added to the mix, muddled with the mint into a pint glass, and the whole thing shaken together. So... Um, their recipe for the whiskey smash, and Ian has uh, made us some some nice uh, lemon juice here, which we'll use. Their recipe is two ounces of bourbon, uh, 0.75 ounces of lemon juice, 0.75 ounces of simple syrup, six to eight mint leaves, and one lemon peel, they say about two inches or so. And then you put all of the ingredients into a shaker uh, with ice and shake hard for six to ten seconds. So I'm uh, pulling out some mint leaves here that we can use, Ian. Do you want a single two-inch piece or would you like two oh, one-inch pieces? Oh, I don't think it matters. Whatever is most convenient for the man with the knife. Uh, so that's just the way that I'll go <laughs> with it. Like. Yeah. That's never, what I like to hear. Never argue with the man with the knife. So, uh, so it is calling for a number of mint leaves, so I'll just... Uh, uh, tear a few of these away. Mm, I love the smell of mint. I mean, who doesn't? But fresh mint is a beautiful fresh mint thing. is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Yes, and uh, thanks to Specs, by the way, I had to um, I had to go and stock right, up on so, uh, on uh, mint leaves. Uh, so we need. 
Let's see. What what do we need? All right, so you, you, you need ice in the shaker, and then we need to um, to do the uh, two ounces of bourbon, 0.75 of lemon juice. There's a shaker. Uh, thank you, sir. All right. That should wake. Uh, and you've got the little measuring. Um, I do have the jigger. Okay, so that? the small the side jigger, yes. jigger, yes. Yes. And the small side is uh, three quarter ounce. Okay, so that's and the, the large side. Is, the large side is uh, one and a half ounce. Just one so and you. a half. So, so as far as the bourbon goes, um, it'll be just a little more than than one of the large side. Right, or, or a little, a uh, little less than the mm-hmm. big side. Yeah. Or a little more uh, than the big side, yes. All right. And so, it so it's sense. it's two ounces of bourbon. You can also do uh, two ounces in here. I didn't realize I had my own package of mint. Mm, yes, you do. But I have torn some leaves away if you'd like to use them. So. Well, that's okay. You continue doing what you're doing. All right. So it says uh, six to eight mint leaves. So I'm going to put my mint leaves into uh, my shaker here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to go with eight, seven, and eight. Eight. Some of them are small, so we'll do that. Okay, six to eight mint leaves. We've got the ice in. I'm going to go. Would you pass me the Buffalo Trace, sir? I will, sir. All right, thank you. Buffalo Trace for you, sir. A wonderfully uh, lemon, wonderfully appointed a little bit of whiskey. I'm going to pour mine into this mixing cup so I can get the two ounces. And and then I'm going to pour a little more. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. I got, oh, lemon juice. Mm Mm-hmm. Does this pop out of here, or do we just pour it out? Uh, you can pop that uh, yellow top out Does it out matter? It, does, it doesn't it matter, out. actually. You can pour it out either way. Did you? Are, are you done with that? Let uh, me let you finish doing what you're well, doing. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. All I've, done is, all I've done is the mint and the whiskey so far. I'll take the top off of the... Uh, I got some of Spex's own house brand Ready Rabbit um, simple syrup for the bar. And this should work nicely. You know, we've never actually, you and I have never actually made drinks on the show. I think we made some martinis one time. That's true. And that was it. But we've never tried actually mixing a cocktail. I realize a martini is a cocktail, but you know what I mean. Uh, it's not It's not necessarily a mixed drink in the traditional sense. All right. We so, forgot to grab napkins, didn't we? Uh, I had some, but I used them when I spilled my beer earlier. So, can I Can I uh, use, do you have a used napkin there? you go. Yes, sir. You can use that one right there. Uh, there we go. Okay, so up. I am now... Oh, you probably need that. Let me that, see right? the jigger. Yep, I now have. Let's see my checklist here. Okay, so here's the, here's the, uh, here's what we have: two ounce bourbon, 0.75 ounce lemon juice, 0.75 ounce simple syrup, six to eight mint leaves, one lemon peel, about two inches or so. Mm-hmm. Add all ingredients, including mint and lemon peel, to a shaker tin. Add ice, shake hard for six to ten seconds. We kind of did that backwards. Yeah, we Strain over ice fresh, first, yeah. fresh ice into a rocks glass. Garnish with a mint crown and enjoy. Okay, so I handed you the simple syrup because uh, I think that's the only ingredient you haven't How much done sim- yet. Oh, yeah. uh, one of these. Go ahead. One of these. I believe the cap, by the way, is a two ounce. Mm, that may be correct. It just popped into my head. Uh, there you go. All right, I believe all my ingredients are now there. I wound up with a couple of lemon seeds, but that should be okay. Nah, it's not going to matter. You got a strainer out. in your, yeah, you got a strainer And uh, now I got my lemon peel. All right, so this is this is very interesting. I love the smell of it already. It smells good. Mm, it really does. That's a fresh melon cocktail. All, all right. right, and once it's in there. Mm-hmm. Let's see where to go. Okay, add all ingredients, including mint and lemon peel, to shaker tin. Add ice, shake hard for six to ten seconds. Strain over fresh ice, and oh, we need fresh ice for need fresh ice in the glasses. Ooh. Yep. Okay. I might have, might not have burnt enough ice. <laughs> we might might run low on ice. Here. All right. Well, we'll figure it out. We have to be judicious about yeah, our drinks. Yeah, that's all right. Ice. That's all right. If if uh, nothing else, we can just drink some whiskey. Are you ready? All right. You ready to shake? All right. It said, uh, how long did it say to shake it? Uh, I'm looking back at this. Six to ten seconds. Six to ten seconds. All right. So uh, ready, set, go. So that's six. And that's about ten right there. All right. So now we pour it through the strainer into the glass. 
And this has not been a hard drink. Like some of the stuff like the Chris Morris can do, you know, like I look at it and go, I could never create that at home. But this one you can totally do at home. This isn't bad. Oh. Yes. And then you garnish this with a lemon wedge, too, I think, or with a piece of lemon rind. And a mint crown. Mm hmm. Like so. All right. Uh, hand me your uh, little cup for Adam. Oh, a little cup for Adam. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to know which of these I give him first, and that's how we'll know which one is which. So, Adam, if you will drink these in the order that I give them to you. I'm not looking. All right. Make I sure am you... hiding my eyes. Well, it actually doesn't matter if you know. It's just that he shouldn't know which one oh, is gotcha. whose. So, so I know which one was the first. This and, uh, smells which one was really the second. good. It actually smelled good just in the shaker. It really did. I also like how pulpy it is. Mm-hmm. Great on the nose. Oh, mm, Ian Smash. Actually, that's really good. <laughs> that's pretty damn good. That is good. really good. Um, so he could be, Adam won't be able to tell any real difference. Well, in you them would at think, all. all things being equal, we right. pretty much follow the same recipe. We use the same everything. This is delicious. I need so, to make like, this it would be So, like, it would be difficult for us to be that different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a clear winner? All right, he had the first one, so I know whose that was. Yeah, and I'm wondering if you'll be able to really even tell a winner. Oh, this ain't bad at all. No, I could drink some of these. Now, a little, little spiciness kind of in the back. Mm -hmm. And and I guess that was why it was saying uh, the article says to use a not as spicy of a whiskey. So they recommended against like using a rye or yeah, something yeah. that was a little higher on the spicy scale. So, uh, So Adam has now had... Uh, whiskey smash number one and number two made with Buffalo Trace. Going with number two. Going with number two. And that was Ian's. So, <laughs> woo -hoo. Uh, So, now, uh, obviously, the differences had to be fairly subtle because we both tried to use, you know, the same amount of ingredients. But what was it I about? I'll tell you the, the biggest difference was uh, number one was a little more, uh, had a little more whiskey. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, it seemed a little bit stronger, which wasn't bad. But when I tasted number two, it was like, okay, this is probably how it's supposed to taste. The, the, like, it's the a little balance more balanced. It was a little more well, balanced. I, number I two actually was. did so. I actually did that knowingly. I did the because it said two ounces of bourbon, and I got to two ounces in the cup, and then I did just another little bit of a splash. Just a because dash. I have found that at home when I make margaritas or uh, you know other drinks, I have a tendency to like them just with just a little more alcohol than what the recipe generally calls for. Well, I, you know, so when I make my I'm my, drunk, my personal basically. cocktail, yeah, the one that I made earlier in the show that I call whiskey with a mm -hmm. piece of ice, mm -hmm. um, it's okay to pour a little heavy on those, yes, because the flavor is almost not changed by that. But I think in certain drinks where you have more ingredients than my whiskey and a chip of ice cocktail, mm -hmm. um, the balance might actually be pretty important. Yeah. Well, in this case, I, uh, it sounds like it is because Adam was saying the balance. Of yours was better, and the only real difference is I added that extra little splash of whiskey. The little splash of whiskey. So it goes to show you that sometimes following the, uh, you know, following the recipe might be a good idea, you know. But you know, in in most things, I mean, baking you have to be really precise. But in most other things, you can sort of season to taste, as it were. Yes. So, all right. So I tell you what, Ian, we will take a uh, a break here, and when we come back, um, we're going to do drinking news. But we might try making this with one other whiskey, since we kind of know, you know, what we need. So now. I got the Elijah Craig here, and um, honestly, I think the Elijah Craig is very much in the same wheelhouse as Buffalo Trace as far as sweetness. Now they're they're not the same; their colors a little different. What There's do you think about things. trying but this? I think uh, I want to try it roses with the four roses. Yeah. I think that's going to be the fun it's, one. It's a four roses. Uh, um, the uh, barrel select. Yeah. Yes. It was a four roses small, small batch. batch. Yes, that's what it is. All right, so that's what we'll try our next batch with. Uh, so we'll take a break. We'll get our uh, things together. When we come back, drinking news on Smoking and Toasted.
Welcome back. It is smoking and toasting. This is the uh, the program that is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. And in uh, today's case, a little about cocktails, which is kind of cool. We have uh, we have made our first whiskey smash. It's the first yes. whiskey smash I've ever made. And, and I and smashed was, the glass. And it was kind of fun. Yes, and Ian did smash a glass during the. Uh, um, during the break there. So uh, we went and got another one. Fortunately, we have uh, plenty of glassware here. You would think the staff likes to drink. And uh, and we are prepared to go uh, in on another one. But first, Ian, it's time for you to grab one of your other uh, instruments of, uh, of entertainment because it's time for Drinking News. Drinking News, Drinking News. Now it's time for Drinking News. Drinking News, Drinking News. Now it's time for drinking news. A Florida man with one arm said he had a gator for a pet. When I asked about his absent arm, he said, uh, I had to take my gator to the vet. Drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. Thanks to the lovely Mrs. Adam Andrews for the, uh, <laughs> uh, for the intro help there. She's uh, awesome. Uh, she is awesome. Uh, uh, what's up, Brianna? Glad. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this in my hand just in case I need to punctuate our <laughs> All right. News. Well, here's a reminder that as popular as this segment is, you may have never heard of it. So uh, let me uh, explain that Drinking News is a segment on the show where we like to pass along a story that has actually appeared in the news somewhere. So it is reportedly true. As the song says, I got a story. I've got and I swear a story. It's true. Yeah, I swear it's true. Uh, but drinking news uh, is sometimes a story about drinking, but not always. But it is always a story that's probably best enjoyed if you've been drinking. A Florida marsupial caused quite a stir recently after breaking and entering into a Fort Walton Beach liquor store. Hey, marsupials got to get theirs, too. (laughs) Apparently, the otherwise healthy female possum, I'm going to call her Penny. Penny possum? As in Penny the possum. Now, the O is silent, you realize, so it could be like Oprah the the (laughs) O-possum, but the O is silent, so we'll go with Penny the possum, right? Uh, Anyway, Penny, the rogue marsupial, apparently made her way around the store after closing time. After breaking in before selecting herself a beverage and climbing up onto a tall shelf. Penny apparently is a fan of whiskey. Nice. Because employees who found her there the next day say it appeared she had cracked open a bottle of bourbon and made herself at home. The employees was, said was she still alive? The employee said the bottle of whiskey laid next to her completely empty and that she appeared disoriented, was excessively salivating, and was pale. Oh, I bet. And a possum's pretty pale to begin with. So if if you're describing a possum as pale, that's uh, that's something. So that possum drank a we, bottle that was probably a uh, third or a quarter of its body weight. It do, do we have the picture up yet, Adam? Oh, so the picture's up there of Penny the possum. That's, that's got to have been the mother bottle. of you'll, all hangovers. You'll have to look at the uh, picture when it comes through there, uh, Ian. Yeah, uh, the employee said the bottle of whiskey laid next to her was completely empty. Uh, so they took her to the Emerald Coast Wildlife refuge. I just, I just want to tell you that I appreciate the fact that the employee had the presence of mind to take that picture. Yes. Oh, before they, before they picked up the possum and like, took it away. Uh, yeah. So this, they, they carried yeah. Penny to, uh, uh, to Michelle Pettis at the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge, and uh, Michelle said the possum, quote, definitely wasn't fully acting normal. End quote. <laughs> I bet not. Uh, The staff of the Wildlife Refuge did their best to care for Penny as she sobered up. We loaded her up with fluids to help flush out any alcohol toxins, Pettis said. Uh, She was good a couple of days later. Pettis says the possum didn't appear to have a hangover. (laughs) Of course, it's hard to tell because the possum can't actually say, oh, my aching head. Or... Can we get fajitas? You know, uh, it's just it's just what a possum does. Uh, the store's owner, Cash Moore, uh, did you he press think that's charges? A, no, you would think that's a made up name though. Cash, Cash Moore. Moore. Yeah, 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 no, beautiful. that's really his name. Uh, uh, you know, I, I just want to point out, Bernie Madoff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Madoff. Yeah. I know. It's did you get that? It's made. That's off. one of the okay. most appropriate Sorry. names <laughs> of all time. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Cash Moore, the uh, the liquor store owner, might be number two. Uh, anyway, he said he never had a possum break in before. Quote, she came in from the outside and was up in the rafters, and when she came through, she knocked a bottle of liquor off the shelf. 
I don't know if he talks like that. That's just the way I decided <laughs> to read his uh, quote. Uh, when she got down on the floor, she drank the whole damn bottle. Uh, Smoking and Toastin has reached out to Moore to ask which bourbon was Penny's favorite, uh, but so far he has not returned. I really wanted to just say she came in through the bathroom window. Oh, uh, that would have been good, wouldn't it? <laughs> she came in through the bathroom window. That would have been a, that would have been a good aside. <laughs> uh, and it also makes me feel really old. Uh, anyway, uh, we have reached out to ask which bourbon was Penny's favorite, but so far, Mr. Cashmore has not returned our calls. <laughs> and that, my friend, is your... Drinking news, drinking news. That's our time for drinking news. Cheers, y'all. By the way, I smell great. My hands smell of mint. <laughs> I've mint pulling, and lemon. I've been pulling these mint leaves off of here, getting ready. So we're going to try this cocktail uh, a second time. And this time we're going to try it with the Four Roses small batch. And Ian, I, I would just like you to notice that I have been very rude. Uh, and I did not, until I got here, take the plastic off I the top. I can't believe you. And I haven't cleared the neck of the bottle for you. So I apologize in advance. The fact that oh, you man. might have to now pour it's very, going to spill. You might have to pour very carefully. So we need some ice, right? Yep, we need some ice. Now, last time we did the ice first, so I guess let's do that oh, again. Oh, we do ice afterwards. Yeah, so it says to add the ingredients and then add the, the ingredients ice. Add the ingredients and the ice. So you need right, six so, to eight of these, right? Yeah, six to eight mint leaves. One, two, three. So one, seven, two, three, 16, 14. Four, five, Got it. six, seven, and just pluck one more here. Eight. All right, eight mint leaves. Then we need um, uh, 0.75 of lemon juice and 0.75 of simple syrup. So I will start with lemon juice. By the way, remind me next uh, next week when I come up to the show mm -hmm. to uh, bring my knife sharpener because that kitchen knife you have is abysmal. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I don't. Uh, I, I just got it off the shelf. I don't know anything about it. So, but yes, you're. It you're probably, probably right. works if you want to heat it up a little bit and then try to cut butter. If you want to come over to my house and do some sharpening too, you're welcome to do that because my <laughs> knives at home could use some wake. I actually uh, can do that for you. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, I'll provide the beer. So. All right, so simple syrup is next. Yep, I just did. The, did you do the lemon yet? Uh, the oh, I haven't done the lemon juice, juice okay. or the simple syrup. So lemon juice is there, and simple syrup is here. And then while you're doing that, I will uh, open up this bourbon, and. Pour some of this bad boy in. All right, so this time I'm going to go with the suggestion. Actually, no. Let's do, let's do this. I'll go a splash more again just so we can tell if it makes a difference the way that All it right. made and I'll a difference go, in the last one. You'll go according to the I'll go as recipe. dead on as I can go. All right, very good. So it is uh, two ounces is what they say. So there's pouring into the cup. There's two ounces. And now I'm going to do an additional splash. Are you sure that's two ounces? That's a lot of whiskey. Look at the okay, so so let's make sure maybe I hold on. Uh, all right, so that line is two ounces, right? It does say that. You're at a mm -hmm. third of a cup there, but I want to tell you, like, this is one and a half ounces. Okay, but a one one and a half plus another half would be about I'm just curious to see. Can can we pour it in here and see how sure. much is left? Like let's fill that up. That's one and a half. So filling that all yeah. the way up. And so you, that leaves us under the two ounce line. Huh. So I'm I'm doing about three and a half ounces. <laughs> that's that's now a let lot. Me, let me pour this in. You want to do that and do a straight three this, ounce? This says it's two ounces. Because that's a one and a half ounce jigger. Okay. And that's about right. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll do a straight three ounces, and then I'll actually. Oh, just pour it in here. Oh yeah, and I gotta do mine too. So, all right, there you are, sir. All right, and then hand me that, and I'll finish mine off. Because it's a straight two ounce pour here, so I got a one and a half. And then you got to go half of that, right? And then an ish, yes, mm -hmm. ish. So mine has less than yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did. You did two. I did three. Is what we basically wound up with. So, all right, and now some ice, my friend. I did do simple syrup, right? I don't know if you did. Pretty sure I did. Did you pour it out of this? Because almost. Let me see. Yep, it's sweet. Okay, very good. All right, so I'll put the cap on these. Oh, now we, we need, need some ice. ice. Yes, yep. we need ice for both uh, so let's shakers. Do this. 
And uh, so it's really a simple drink to make, which is why, kids, you could do this at home. Thank you, sir. Attached to this tether here. Yes, that's all right, as long as the tether has drink stuff in it. All right. When you are ready to shake, we will do our little uh, shaking thing. Yes, sir. I'll let you do the honors. All right. Let's uh, do it ready, set, go. Set for six to ten seconds. There's six. And there's ten. All right. So let's see how this uh, plays out. Oh, we need ice in our cups. Oh, that's right. Oh. I forgot about that. All right, I drained the last one, so this will just be ice. Thank you. And pour that over the ice. So the difference in these is the last one was Buffalo Trace, and this one is Four Roses Small Batch. And then again, you want a little heavy alcohol. Yeah, I went an extra ounce uh, more than you did, so it'll be interesting to see, and we'll, we'll let Adam try these as well. I'm going to try not to break this glass. Okay, sounds good. All right, pour some of yours into oh, a cup for right. Adam. Already done. Here you go. Already done. Very good. All right. Uh, and then don't forget you need a sprig of... Uh, All right, Adam, that's one, and that's two. Oh, you need a sprig of... Yeah, a sprig of mint. Yes, very good. All, All right. right. There it is. Looks for the very camera. Pretty. Looks very pretty, isn't it? That's All pretty right. awesome. Cheers, Cheers, sir. Yes, absolutely. Cheers, y'all. Mm. This one might be even better. It's pretty darn good. Yeah. I think I like the Four Roses. Yeah, I do too. Uh, it's, so it's interesting this, because we've never really done this either, like made the same drink with a couple of different uh, kinds of, uh, of the base liquor. And uh, it is interesting how different it is. It's not wildly different, but it's, it's subtly different, and it's I think in a good way. And it's a slightly higher proof. It's 45, mm -hmm. which is not huge, but it is a slightly higher proof. And the Buffalo Trace is what? 40, I think. 40? Okay. Well, that doesn't always no, work for cocktails. Same proof, 45. So 45 for both. It's yeah. just a difference in... I noticed that the... Um, just in, in taking a whiff of the nose of the Four Roses bottle, the Buffalo Trace has a little more traditional bourbony nose mm -hmm. than this one does. This is a little bit uh, more floral. This is a little more, you know, maple bourbon uh, I think the, in, uh, uh, on the nose. I think the Buffalo Rose, I think one of the reasons we might be attracted to this is because it lets the um, mint shine through a little yes. more. This one does seem more minty. It's got a little. What's up? A tie Die. on these. All right. I so, even with the egg, that was an extra ounce in his. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Ian's was the first in this case, and mine was the second. Wow. Okay. And you couldn't tell the difference. But in the last one with the Buffalo Trace, he could tell the difference he with could taste more the alcohol. Boozier and mm -hmm. booziness. It's a big difference on the first one. Interesting. I'm curious now. Are right, you gonna splash a little, uh, yeah, a little cause, cause uh, four not? roses in there? Oh, uh, yeah, that should be interesting. That's kind of what I do with martinis, you know. If I if I get them a little bit too, uh, uh, you know, uh, too salty from the olive juice, I just splash a little vodka or gin in, depending on what it's made of. In oh. case you're wondering why you should carry a pocket knife, I think on this show I have shown enough times. Uh, I think you're a, you're a pocket knife kind of guy. Let me let me uh, tell you something interesting that I discovered. You know, when uh, we had our cocktail expert Chris Morris on with us mm -hmm. last, uh, he brought in. Um, it almost I, like I just dumped a bunch in here and it almost doesn't change the flavor. Well, at that's all. what Adam was saying that the one with the the one with more of the bourbon in it was not uh, necessarily that different in flavor. Than, like I'm than sure the there's a there's a breaking point. Yeah. But you mm -hmm. were about to say, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Chris Morris. I uh, remember when Chris Morris brought um, the the uh, Texas vodka uh, guy in, mm -hmm. or the Texas uh, gin and and vodka, and I'm and I'm so I, I, I'm so sorry that name is escaping me right now, of the um, of the name of his uh, distillery. But he had the Texas vodka. It's was it Fox? It was. Fox and Seeker. Fox and Seeker. Thank you. Okay, so he brought the Fox and Seeker in, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, the gentleman that was here was kind enough to leave some bottles behind, and we each took mm -hmm. something different, uh, and I took home the Texas vodka. Yeah. All right. So 
At home, my wife loves vodka martinis, and we drink them uh, on a regular basis. Um, my current vodka of choice is Space City Vodka. Yeah. They make a really well-crafted, well-distilled vodka uh, that I can get in a big jug for a very reasonable price, and it's what I buy and stick in the freezer to make mm. martinis with. Um, however, I was uh, I was almost out of it. So the other night, I made our first round of martinis— I made with the Space City Vodka, mm-hmm. and I made the second round with the Fox and Seeker. Now, here's what was interesting. The Fox and Seeker was, and I, and I love the, the, the Space City Vodka, mm-hmm. the Fox and Seeker was so much more floral, it was almost like a gin martini. Oh, wow. It, it, was, it was a marked difference, and I made some again last night just to see if, it was, if, if I would notice that if it wasn't an A-B comparison. And I did. So for those of you who love gin, you might want to check out that Fox and Seeker uh, vodka because it might be yeah. the kind of vodka you would really, really like. Because we talk so much about vodka being the flavorless spirit, right? Mm-hmm. That it takes on the flavor of whatever you add to it. Well, I think, though, uh, <coughs> I think though to set to set themselves apart, I think there's been a few companies that, that make it make a uh, vodka that has a little of its own inherent mm-hmm. sweetness and mm-hmm. has a little of its own inherent flavor because traditionally like the better vodkas where you distill it down to where it is just nothing right you know where you it's add it to something it's quadruple distilled odorless, and it's odorless and tasteless, tasteless. It's, yeah. you know mm-hmm. and there's a value to that for certain things i think mm-hmm. there's certain drinks that that would be a benefit for you know but i i also think like in the craft world it's really nice to like just seeing what the different flavors like i love buffalo trace this is an absolute go-to mm-hmm. but i think this drink is superior with the four roses mm-hmm. you know i'd be interested to see what this, it does with the elijah craig and honestly some this, different is, ones. this is delicious and it would be interesting to try maybe some other um expressions as well and just yeah. see just see how much this changes and so that's a big part of you know when you go to a a, a nice restaurant and you're looking at their cocktail menu, very often they will put on the menu the kind of, you know, tequila or mm-hmm. uh, bourbon or rum uh, that, they'll, that they're putting in the drink. And I'm guessing that those aren't just done because those brands are involved and are, you know, vendors to the restaurant. They're often done because that's what the mixologist thought worked the best yeah. when, when they tried uh, making those drinks. You know, so There's a flavor profile that goes with this particular. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. This was delicious with Buffalo Trace, mm-hmm. but it is subtly better with the Four Roses. Agreed. So, Nicholas Talamentes, if you are, uh, if you are listening... Uh, your product, uh, your it's product, smash. yeah, it's it's smash, Hulk smash, um, uh, Nick smash, Nick smash, and uh, and whiskey smash. Uh, by the way, I think we're trying to line up Nicholas Talamentes and our friend Docs on the show at the same time. <laughs> Apparently, the two of them have gotten into an argument recently over which is superior, Taco Bell or Taco Bueno. And what I said to them was, it's always Taco Tuesday on Smoking and Toasting, so why don't you come on and talk about it? Don't you think it'd be interesting? I don't, I've never had Taco Bueno. Yeah, I don't know if they have Taco Bueno here. I've seen them. I think them. it may be. Oh, you've seen when them I'm here? Traveling, not here. No, no. Okay, I think, yeah. I've seen them before, but uh, I think that's when I'm out of town, when I'm yeah. traveling and stuff. I, uh, and uh, it, it should be an interesting comparison. I don't it, I don't think we can A-B them, but we can certainly have fun talking tacos. <laughs> yeah? Quick, send us tacos. Yeah. They'll be uh, soggy. Ian uh, just pulled the wax off the top of the Buffalo Bayou. Smoke on the bayou. It says on the front, on, across the, uh, the buffalo's nose, it says caramel and toffee. So I guess they're they're not making any secret about what they're going for here. Smoke on the Bayou. You know the history of that song. They were actually staying in a hotel room, and there there was a big fire like across the uh, the bay or whatever from where they were staying, and uh, like a, another hotel or building was on fire, and there was smoke actually kind of like crawling across the surface of the water, and that was where the inspiration came from for the lyric it's, that became it's, that famous song. Well, so I teach kids guitar, so okay. that song comes across my uh, desk, oh, I bet so it to does. Speak, yeah, I bet it does more often than you can imagine because it's a it's a riff that. But is one not of the that things that I make kids do when they want to learn that song, I say, "That's <coughs> fine. I'm going to show you this riff." And I'll show you how to play this song. But next week, you got to come in and tell me 
what this song is about. Mm. I make them go learn the story of because that's not only a cool song. Yeah. I mean, that's it's a, great a story. great rock song. It really is. Uh, speaking of great, this cocktail is fantastic. Like Shit, I'm gonna be, yeah. I'm gonna be making this at home. This is wonderful. Liliana uh, points out that Frank Zappa was playing. That's the whole line. Frank Zappa and the mothers were at the best place in town. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he says, uh, till some stupid with a flare gun burned the place to the ground. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that was what caught on fire, and that was what mm-hmm. they were seeing across the uh, across the bay there. Fa- Smoke on the water, stuff. a fire in the sky. Fire in the sky. Great uh, song. And then there's fire on the mountain, and lightning that, in the air, which is that, a whole other thing. That uh, that solo. Oh, yeah. Whoo. Yeah, it's great stuff. Great stuff. All right. This is not flavorless or odorless. Or odorless. This is a, so show everybody that bottle. This is the Smoke on the Bayou from Buffalo Bayou, which is located right here in our hometown of Houston, Texas. Caramel and toffee, and it says, uh, well, it's a, you'll, you'll have to read what it says, Ian, because I can't read it from here. It says, you hold in your hands an ale that could never be replicated anywhere else on the planet except Houston. Mm. It has the flavors of our city infused in the malt itself. It is a song only our great city can sing. Does that mean they use straight bayou water? Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> I mean, well, if, just, they did, if they did, it smells great. Just curious. But you're right. this, this smells like a big old like liquid toffee. It really you know, does. It just has that. Uh, it says, uh, balance is sweet and savory and a malt bomb of caramel and toffee. Wow. Uh, it will mellow out with age and transform into an unapologetic sublime in six to twelve months, which I believe this one has now done because this done, is pretty yes. amazing. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you talk about. It, it's interesting they use the word mellow because it is both. It manages to be both big and mellow it at is the pungent. same time. Yes, and it's smoky. But here's the thing: I've had this fresh. Yeah. Um, so how does this compare with the fresh? I've had this fresh, and it's a little too much fresh. Like mm-hmm. the smoke. It's a little too much fresh. It's a little too smoky right out of the bottle. But like having it a year later, like uh, what's the what's the? It's twenty twenty. But do they have an actual? Yeah, date? I, don't, I don't know. Sometimes if it has they a have date, the actual date. brewed on. Date. But I think this comes out a little later in the year. I don't think it comes out in January. So it's so. probably had so it's almost probably the exact six to eight months about, now. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, or or maybe or maybe more. Maybe it could 10, be close to a yeah. year old. You know. Uh, but I'm telling you, it but uh, this is absolutely fantastic. By the I've way, I've probably uh, had it for six to eight months. This is what Alan Denny would find absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. So Alan keeps his name it keeps cropping up on the show. Alan, if you were still with us, let's get you back on the show. Let's have you uh, come in and hang in the studio with us, please. Uh, it'd be great. This is you know what this reminds me of those toffee candies my grandmother used to keep in our house. I don't, I don't know what they were called. A little bit. They weren't super sweet. They had a little right. bit of bitter to them. Yes. And also they would stick to your teeth in the yes. absolute worst Big way. Time. But you'd be like. You know, yeah, you would, like, you, would, you would play with it because you would like <laughs> stick your teeth together and then try totally. to pull your jaw apart. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah that's. What I mean, I don't know do. anything about that. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, this Ian is delicious. This is pretty darn good. I mean, it is. It is really different from uh, like some of the stouts and some of the bigger beers we've had. Although it's what eight is this? Eight and a half percent. Is eight point three. Eight point three. Okay. So, but it doesn't come off real boozy. Uh, because it's got a lighter mouthfeel to it. Uh, oh, you're going back and forth with the cocktail now. Weirdly enough, it doesn't interrupt nor add to the cocktail. Right, it's kind of a separate thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they're just they're just like two separate entities. You're totally right. You're totally <laughs> right. They don't form like Voltron, but they don't fight each other either. No, and going back to the beer is much the same. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, I well, think we've that, done it, sir. That is an absolutely delicious beer. So, uh, Whiskey Smash, what a great, easy-to-make drink with just a few uh, with just a few uh, ingredients. It's absolutely. A lemon, mm-hmm. some mint leaves, some simple syrup, and a whiskey, and that's, that's it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to run very specifically back through the... Um, the recipe for you in our final segment, which is coming up. And uh, we'll toast you guys off, talk about some of the things we have coming up here on Smoking and Toasting. Thank you for enjoying the 251st episode of this program with us. Uh, we'll be right back. It's Smoking and Toasting. Is it 51st, not 41st? 251st. Holy crap, today. why haven't they stopped us? No one has stepped in to stop us. <laughs>
Welcome back into Smoking and Toasting. This is the radio program and podcast and video extravaganza. This is all about uh, craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars today, about uh, cocktails too, which we'll get back to in a moment. Ian, I've always loved, even though I'm not a huge fan of the spirit, I've always loved that Crown Royal billboard that you've seen that has the big bottle of Crown Royal up on the billboard and it says, not actual size. Yes. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm i going to be honest. Like People get down on Crown Royal, but I think Crown Royal is one of those ubiquitous brands mm-hmm. that it's easy <clears throat> to hate on because they are big. Right. And frankly, Crown Royal and, and uh, Crown Royal over some ice, not bad. Not bad. It's okay. No, no you're, you're absolutely right. It, it is drinkable. It, it is drinkable. I would take it above a Jack Daniels uh, old number seven. Man, I went to a wedding one time, and I asked for a scotch, and they gave me... Uh, they gave me a uh, 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 Johnny Walker Red. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> but but see, the Johnny, the Johnny Walker. Fire water, my but friend. The Johnny not Walker in a good Black, way. though, is not bad. Johnny Walker Black is drinkable. Johnny Walker Red is atrocious. Have you ever had blue? Blue is amazing. Yes. Have it you is. had gold? Gold I have is not fantastic. Had gold. It's I have absolutely not had fantastic. Gold. I've had I've had blue. I used to work for a guy that owned a, a radio station and a newspaper, and when we would go out, Occasionally, not that often, we would go out occasionally for drinks. Uh, he would order Johnny Walker Blue. It and, might have and, been, and he, and so I would order it too, and we'd drink it together. And then here's here's the crazy thing: at the end of the night, we're having this super expensive Johnny Walker Blue, right? And he would, and he would say, "I don't have any cash. Will you pay for this and expense it?" So I would pay for it. But then I would turn it in on my expenses. But nice. still, I'd be out like four hundred bucks right. until the until the expense check came through. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But Wait, what am a, I doing that? Hold on. Uh, yeah, that's that's a pretty good. Um, so, uh, I think uh, I had one of my um, scotch tasting nights at my house, and Joel from Eureka Heights was over there, and I think he bought a bottle, a bottle of the Johnny Walker Gold. Uh, and that's kind of in the medium. That's like their, yeah. I think it's in the mm, 70 to $90 range I at that so. time. Now, I, keep in mind, yeah. it was probably 10 years ago. Yeah, I have not had Gold. And it's awesome. And I also have one, I have a Double Black at the yeah. house. Oh, Did a I double bring that black. on the show? I don't remember. You might have, a long time ago. I may have. The Johnny Walker Double Black. I think we should try it again if you did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll bring it. I have a, and a buddy of mine, uh, a buddy of mine, Mark. You've met Mark. Mark mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, has has been uh, around the show a few times. Uh, but he brought me that one time when I was doing some work on uh, some of his guitars and stuff. He goes, man, I brought you a present. I was like, hmm. So good. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. All right. Well, good, good. Well, um, we got off on this tangent because I wanted to talk to you about the the world's largest bottle of whiskey. And uh, it is a world record setting five foot 11 inch bottle. And it was recently filled. And I know you're going to expect me to say like Jack Daniels or Crown Royal. Uh, but no, it was recently filled with 311 liters of of 32-year-old McCollin. What? <laughs> yeah. Wilson! <laughs> oh. um, fine scotch, of course, is a sipping drink with bottles often, you know, sitting open for years on the shelf before they're finished because you're pouring just, you know, yeah. a little of each each time. But uh, if you drink scotch a little bit faster, this bottle might be for you. It is bigger than an entire liquor cabinet. It is uh, uh, a pretty... <laughs> Listen, honey. I only got one bottle of liquor at the house. Yeah, that's right. But it's damn good. (laughs) On September the 8th, whiskey-focused investment firm Famai Holdings Group and alternative assets company Rosewin Holdings teamed up with the independent bottler Duncan Taylor Smith Whiskey to officially break the Guinness World Record for largest bottle of scotch with a 311-liter bottle that stands about 5 feet 11 inches tall. All right, I just want to point out, like, I enjoyed our drinking news segment. Yeah. But this should be drinking. Uh, it almost should be like like there's no like there's no like punchline here. Well, like this is but, for real. Uh, yeah, uh, the bottle apparently took over an hour to fill using a blend of whiskey from two casks, but the results were worth the wait. The previous record set by uh, Scotch brand, the famous Grouse, in 2012, was bested by an impressive 83 liters. 
Uh, equally impressive is the quality Ooh, of the scotch the itself. Uh, two sister casks of 32-year-old scotch from the highly prized McCollin Distillery, a brand that also holds the record for the most expensive bottle of whiskey ever sold. Oh. Yeah. Uh, to put it into perspective, a single 70-centiliter bottle of the original 30-year-old McCallan Oak sells for about 5500 to $7,000. Mm. And a similar uh, similar independent bottling uh, fetches over four thousand and one hundred and fifty dollars. So what we have here in our mega bottle alone is about four hundred and forty four of those. The guy said, uh, "We'll leave you to do the math." And uh, the uh, food and wine article that I'm reading from, they did the math. About one point eight four million dollars mm. is what it would be worth. So, wow and wow. Is all I have to say. And I'm going to say wow about this cocktail. Ian, this is, I've enjoyed this far more than I expected to, the whiskey um, smash. You have some left? I, uh, no, I have just the dregs. Oh. <laughs> but, but I keep, like, drinking, like, you know, the diluted dregs, and they're good, too. Like, they're not as good as it was, but you know what I'm saying? Like, we want to like, make this and put it on one of those frozen machines. Mm, that would be awesome. Mm, mm, mm. Absolutely. So let's go over the recipe again before uh, before we go, because this is a very, yeah, it's a very, very good thing. All right, I've got to refresh. The Rob Report does one of those. Um, you pulling it up? There yeah, there, it does one of those annoying things where it pastes an ad over the top of the screen, and you can't get rid of it, and then you have to totally reload. So I reload. By the way, the ad now is for FlexJet, the first Fractional program to offer unlimited hours, flex jet, for when you need a personal jet of your own, Ian Perry. Sometimes I do. I bet you do. Uh, I mean, those needs have largely uh, gone unfulfilled, but that <laughs> doesn't mean they're not there. That doesn't mean they don't exist. All right, here's the recipe for the whiskey smash. Two ounces of bourbon. Based on our small sample, we recommend Four Roses small batch. But try any bourbon Man, you got. Man, that was good. They also, by the way, recommended you away from spicy bourbons. They said, uh, don't go rye, don't go anything that's too spicy, because this drink's going to have a little spice of its own. Even it does have that. a little spice, but I, I can't I can't help but think that bullet would make a good one too all right well that'll be interesting we'll try it uh all right two ounces of bourbon 0.75 or three-fourths of an ounce of lemon juice as the northeast would say three quarters and right and we squeezed our own by the way you could also use the bottle of lemon juice i'm sure but we nah, nah, squeeze our own, own. It's i mean better. the bottle of lemon juice it works but yeah, it's not it's okay. good it's okay but this is better uh, and then the same amount of simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce, 0.75 of simple syrup. We use the uh, Specs Ready Rabbit, but you can get all kinds of simple syrup, or you can just make your own. You can make your own, yeah. yeah. It takes just a few minutes. It takes enough. just a few minutes, and there's all kinds of uh, instructions mm -hmm. on the Internet of, of how to do that. I like this because it's easy, and I don't have to mess up a couple of pans making it. So, uh, And then... Six to eight mint leaves. I think both of us went with eight. Yes, we I went say, maximum mint leaves. I will say that the mint was one of the most enjoyable and pleasant things about this cocktail. Well, the mint is the mint counteracts the sweetness from the simple syrup, but also counteracts the sweetness from the bourbon and right, creates right. a more refreshing yes, experience. Absolutely. absolutely it does. So it's not just sweet and cloying, mm -hmm. you know? So And then they uh, say a one lemon peel, about two inches or so, so all we did is Ian cut some lemon peel away from the lemons that we had juiced to make our uh, to make our lemon juice for the cocktail. You put all of those ingredients, including the mint and the lemon peel, into a shaker tin. You add ice, shake hard for 6 to 10 seconds, and then strain over fresh ice into a rocks glass, garnish with a mint crown, as he did so beautifully here, mm -hmm. and enjoy. And that is it. I'm perfecting my limp-wristed shaking style. I noticed you were shaking very casually there. Very casual. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and for those of you who were paying uh, attention at the very beginning of this show, mm -hmm. uh, I want to I want to go over uh, my drink that I showed uh, that I that I made first. Okay. Okay. This is the cocktail that you mentioned. This is the right? cocktail that I made at the beginning of the show. So this is how it works, right? You're gonna have you take your whiskey mm -hmm. and you're gonna have one part whiskey. Okay. You're pouring that just into a little plastic yep. cup there. Using Elijah Craig for yes. this illustration. And then you take a chip of ice, mm -hmm. and you put it in the cup. And there's one cube of ice. And you're done. That is a cocktail. That Now, 
when you did it in the cocktail glass, you also used a straw for your stir stick. Yes. I. You know what? If you need me to do that again. Well, I, I didn't want to, you know, uh, you can show people. You're right. You we should go the whole way. So this straw is too long, so I'm mm -hmm. going to uh, uh, marginalize it. Okay. This, my friends, is what a marginalized straw looks like. In case you've been worried about them. Now, how beautiful is that? That actually looks pretty darn good. Now, <laughs> I know this drink sounds complicated. It's one part whiskey mm -hmm. and one chip of ice. <laughs> and you might ask, once I have these ingredients, what do I do? You put them in a glass. And you drink them. And you drink them. Well, I think this is uh, very good advice. Now, this is not a whiskey smash, but this will eventually lead to Ian smash. <laughs> you heard of Hulk smash? This is Ian smash. Uh, well, Ian, this was fun. So I think every once in a while, we shouldn't do it too often, but every once in a while, you and I should challenge ourselves to do a new cocktail on the show. Just like we did today, and see how it comes out. Because I was very happy. I think this sounds with the results like of this today. sounds like this sounds like a series that we could do maybe once or twice. Yeah, every couple months. Yes, every, and and maybe what? this should be a, a, a comment driven. Oh right, maybe people should suggest what drinks they want us to yes. try to make. Uh, well, they'll be like throwing Listener in like suggestions, Long Island emails. iced tea, and you know stuff that's impossible to make. Right? Uh, yeah, but, <laughs> chocolate cakes. But and no, we could ask Chris Morris. Lemon drops. We could ask Chris Morris, our uh, cocktail expert, for a couple of suggestions of you know relatively easy because that that was why I wanted to do this whiskey smash thing because I thought you know, if we do this right and it comes out good, which it did. Uh, this is something people can very, I mean, this is four very ingredients. easily make at home. Right. You don't have to go. I mean, this go, is simple you don't syrup, have to go, lemon, right. mint, and um, whiskey. And you that's don't have it. to go pluck the wild elderberries from the west facing uh, side of the uh, <laughs> uh, mountain in Israel in order to make the, uh, uh, make the drink. I mean, it's a pretty. I mean, if you can find mint leaves, which turned out, by the way, for me to be a little harder than I suspected, but it's something that most stores have in. In stock on a regular basis, uh, and I did find lots at Specs. By the way, um, they uh, it it worked out great. Uh, so I recommend that you do this. In fact, I almost wish my glass wasn't uh, empty, but I do have a little bit of this. Do you want me to make you one of my specialty cocktails? You know, it, actually, it's okay because I have some smoke on the bayou sitting here in my cup, oh, and see, I can I use this. Up. I can use this to toast you away. Uh, thanks to uh, Adam, who not only was on the wheels of steel today, but was our uh, our uh, drink uh, inspector. Uh, who uh, look how awesome that cocktail looks. Mm -hmm. It does look good. <laughs> Cheers, baby. Cheers to you, my friend. And uh, <laughs> nice to be on the show with just you again. This was a lot of fun. Have a great week, my friends. And uh, this cocktail needs an umbrella. Cheers, y'all. Cheers, y'all. <laughs>